Sanjay Jha respond because you know the fact is as Sanju Varma is rattling these details it appears that the BJP is intent on bringing the issue of Sanatan Dharma squarely into the national mainstream and painting the opposition as I said as in some way anti-Hindu. To that extent do you believe that Uday Nidhi Stalin has made remarks that were entirely avoidable? Uh, Razdeep, I think the attempt by the BJP to conflate the statement of Mr. Stalin in the context of Tamil Nadu's politics, his ideology, his social movements, is a deliberate political gambit, basically trying to use Sanatan Dharma as a potent weapon to once again polarize India at a pan-India level. Mm -hmm. Here is the truth. The hard truth is that the BJP's hypocrisy on Dr. Ambedkar today stands exposed. And let me explain that to you. Everyone who's aware of Tamil Nadu's history will be aware of the role of Periya Ramaswamy. But the most, I would say, potent influence there thereafter was Dr. Ambedkar himself. And the BJP today has to actually own up and say that have they not read Annihilation of Caste by Dr. Ambedkar? Dr. Ambedkar, by the way, everybody knows that, in 1956 converted from Hinduism to a Buddhist. Why? I mean, his if you if you read even the synopsis of his book, it is about the evils of the caste system. Now, the bottom line here is this, uh, Rajdeep, that the BJP's true colors, you know, are getting completely exposed in the political mainstream. How the India Alliance actually gets a message out politically, that is going to be, in my opinion, a communication. No, but how do uh, they do it? No, no, but you see, the BJP is painting, as I said, the India Alliance in some form using Uday Nidhi Stalin's comments to trigger off a debate on Sanatan Dharma. How does the opposition, right. you know, the fine distinctions, the academic distinctions that can be made between how Sanatan Dharma is perceived in Tamil Nadu and the rest of the country, that's not right. going to work as, as a communication strategy. Well, Razdeep, Razdeep, let me tell you, let me tell you how straightforward it is actually. Number one, the BJP is trying to make this, give it a religious color. What the India Alliance needs to do is to tell the people of India that the, here is a desperate political party, which has been, in my opinion, a monumental disaster on all fronts, trying to use uh, the, the basically the lessons of Dr. Ambedkar against the evils of the caste system and go and tell the people of India, especially those who are not belonging to the upper caste, as to how the BJP basically plays, in my opinion, social discrimination okay. and what I call is political marginalization of several sections of India into a political tool. I mean, this is what the India Alliance needs to go and tell the Dalits. So you're saying you're saying that you you're saying that the India Alliance can turn this on its head by suggesting that the BJP is essentially still a very Brahminical Hindu party that it still is against OBCs and Dalits and OBCs in particular because remember the OBCs are now the critical section of Indian politics. But Dr. Suraj yes, Yangde, we've heard more than once. Can I quickly yeah, no, in? one minute, ma'am. We've heard more than once Ambedkar's name being mentioned. How do you see this playing out in the context of Dalit OBC, Dalit Bahujan politics, which has become far more important and assertive than ever before in India? Are they concerned about seeing this Sanatan Dharma debate playing out in the manner that it is, in, according to you? Rajiv, it's good to see you too. Um, I think uh, the contemporary political scope that we are kind of placing it within India versus the rest kind of alliance, Modi, BJP versus Congress, we have to understand the crux of the debate has to do with what is termed as Sanatan Dharma. It's not the Dravidian in a sense of the political cadre that has coined or brought out this notion. It is one of the Tamilian, but Dalit politician of the VCK party, Tolu Tilumavaravan, who has coined the term Sanatan Dharma. In fact, he has written an entire book uh, about, about a decade or so ago, which he, the title of the book is Uprooting the Sanatan Dharma. And in that, he really takes a look at what it really means to be at the bottom of the society and yet look at the uh, values that constitution offers us. And, and in its own sense, Dr. Ambedkar himself, and if you, if you go through writing, but more particularly riddles in Hinduism, which really created much more debate. And ironically, Shusena was somebody that was up against 
uh, the publication of riddles in Hinduism. And that's where Dr. Ambedkar's genius has come to fore. What Dr. Ambedkar is looking at when it comes to Sanatana, Sanatana, what we mean is the absolute eternal kind of continuity, unchanging values of, of a person within a certain religious order. But Dr. Ambedkar goes and, you know, in his own uh, linguistic expertise, what he does is he looks at what it meant to be a person in the Vedic era, as opposed to transcending into an open, open issue where Vedic era was clearly a slaughter of animals, cows, and, and, and consumption of meat of horses and cows and so forth. The bovine was considered central to that economy. And then in Upanishad, immediately, which is in opposition to the rise of Buddha's Dhamma, which takes an ahimsa path. So in many sense, Dr. Ambedkar is looking at the changing aspects of what we have understood. But what did happen when the Orientalists who had come uh, to India literally picked up on the same Brahminical interpretation and argued for the sanctity of what was named eventually as Brahminism, and then now what we have within the broader canon of Hinduism. Now, in this entire debate, uh, what we essentially miss out is the, the, the side of one that is given to Udenidhi Stalin, uh, who is a, a third generation politician, and as opposed to somebody who's coining a term to uproot. And in many sense, A. Raja again becomes a central defector in this, while he was again uh, the person who was butted at the 2G scam, where entire uh, 2G scam was, was put on his head. And now again, he's quoted. The Dravidian parties in Tamil Nadu are no any purer when it comes to the politics of Dalit liberation. It has had a very patronizing attitude because the landed Shudras have always had anxiety with the radical Dalit, especially Ambedkarite and Buddhist revival. And oftentimes when such revival has come, they have often used the cauldron of caste to pin down upon the very Dalit enterprise and constituency. And just look around. I was in Tamil Nadu. I was trying to investigate. And the same happens with their alliance partner in VCK, where it's, it's much more degrading relationships that they have developed, and we can notice that. Now, Sanatana Dharma, as, an, as, as a value proposition, Arasti, when it comes to the Dalits, the Shudras, and, and, and now uh, the, also the Adivasis, they were looked as Shudras, uh, they were looked at chandalas, they were looked up as vanvasis, where somebody who are part of the system, but yet excluded. Their labor was most important, but we cannot have them. So in, in many sense, what Professor Kanchale argued recently mm -hmm. was looking at the duija, the varna dharma, as opposed to varna sharma. And the varna dharma and varna sharma really gives duties as opposed to the religious sanctity that we bring. The Dalits, Shudras and Adivasis have often looked at as as an anathema. But but you see, the, 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 the question is the political challenge. You know, while you've right. given us an excellent academic exposition of how you see Sanatan Dharma having evolved, Sumant Raman, the question is politically. As you mentioned, you know, it will cause eventually embarrassment because it can be used, you know, the term Sanatan Dharma is seen as eternal in a way to Hinduism. Therefore, if it is used in the manner and the context in which is, with the language that it is, it can be interpreted by many as extremely offensive. And that is no, no, where, where the issue comes. The, the inability to our politicians to recognize how it plays out today. Radhif, that is my point as far as the Congress is concerned. And where I disagree with uh, Sanjay Jha is that I think they missed a trick. You would notice very carefully that Kamal Nath, T.S. Singh Dio, who are all facing elections in three months, quickly wash their hands off. They said that they did not agree with this statement categorically. Whereas Mr. K.C. Venugopal sitting in Delhi gives a wishy-washy statement. People have rights to their freedom of expression. We respect their rights for freedom of expression. I mean, what is going on? You know that this is not going to damage the DMK. The only party that's going to get hit is the Congress. And you lose nothing by distancing yourself from these comments. After all, you are in an alliance. You are not part of the same party. Right. That party has a, a, a viewpoint. We have another viewpoint. We don't agree with Mr. Udainidhi's views. The matter would have ended there. You know, but and they have not done it in all these days, except okay. the few leaders in Madhya Pradesh and uh, Hindi Belt states who have sort of come out a little more vocally against it. So, so you think you think the Congress should have come out more strongly and clearly against the statements, or at least distance themselves more clearly from Udainidhi Stalin's statements? But Sanju Verma. You know, it's interesting the BJP has transformed itself. It's a much more OBCI's party today than it ever was. More than 113 of your MPs out of 313 are OBCs. 
uh, you know that that accounts for about 37 percent you have a large number of dalit and adivasi mps but the feeling is that the that the party itself has still not completely moved out of a certain sense of brahminical hinduism what if tomorrow the opposition was to say that the bjp's endorsement of sanatan dharma is essentially an endorsement according to the opposition or the dravida parties of brahminical hinduism how will you respond that this is actually the fact that the bjp still sees itself as a brahminical party okay i like that question and i will respond to you with statistics in the 2019 elections the bjp's hmm? vote share amongst hindus overall went up from 36 to 44 percent amongst obcs it went up from 34 to 44 percent amongst dalits it registered the biggest rise from 24 percent to 34 percent among Adivasis from 37% to 44% and among upper caste Hindus from 47% to 52%. The limited point I'm making is that the biggest vote share percentage rise that the BJP saw in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections came from the Dalit community and it sure. was not without the reason. Caste man no, is also please, can I finish? Ma'am, I agree can with I you. Ma'am, ma just a minute. The political reality you express is, is, is right, but the, the social reality is that we still remain as, in large parts of this country extremely stratified around caste. So is the BJP... Can I finish? According to Uday Nidhi's talent, he is giving a critique of the caste system. He's calling for a casteless society. Okay. I heard you. You did not interrupt uh, Mr. Yengde. Yeah. At least extend the courtesy to me, if not as much, by half okay. that time. Okay. Thank you. Who the hell, and I'm not going to be charitable, who the hell is Udhanidhi Stalin, a crypto-Christian, a converted Christian, his uncle A. Raja, a baptized Christian, his father N.K. Stalin, who calls himself an atheist, but is also a crypto-Christian, why should I take lessons on Sanatan Dharma from these, should I say, rice bag converts? I will not well, I think be These so are uncharted. very unfortunate words being yes. used, ma'am. Now let me, now let avoid, me, now let avoid me Avoid using, avoid, you are, you, you are guilty of using the same hateful, finish. spiteful language you are accusing him of. May avoid it. May I finish? May I finish? Yes. Thank you. I want to ask Rajdeep Sardesai, did you once, did you once do a debate where you asked just this simple question to Udhyanidhi Stalin, A. Raja, Priyanka, Priyank Khadge and company and the cabal including Rahul Gandhi and just bear with me for 20 seconds your audience needs to hear this. The number of churches representing different castes and communities within the Christian community, the Methodist Church, the Pentecostal Church, the Independent Charismatic Church, the Church of England, the Brethren Church, the Exclusive Brethren Church, the Orthodox Church, what are the you? Lutheran Church, wait a minute, the Roman Catholic Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Congregational Church, the Baptist Church, the Society of Friends Church, the URC Church. All these churches represent different castes. If you're a member of the Methodist Church, you may not have your son or daughter marrying into Ma'am, quickly tell me what's the point the you're Roman trying to Roman make. Catholic I'm Church. giving you 30 seconds. Tell me the point you're trying to make. What My is limited it? point is, can you stop? Be no, please do not. Panelist. Please do not use harsh words. But you can be have your thirty seconds. My thirty seconds will now be forty-five seconds because you have the bad habit. Of no, but sorry. If my you're... limited point is this. Yes. My limited point is this. Be it Islam, be it Christianity, they all have caste hierarchies. In West Bengal alone, Islam has thirty-five castes. I just read out. The 12 dozen plus castes okay. that exist within the church umbrella. Now my limited last point is this. When the Congress and its alliance partner DMK sit here and give a bhashan to the BJP on the very venerable, venerable Dr. B.R. Baker, I am reminded of the fact that on two occasions, 1952 and 1954, if B.R. Ambedkar's entry into the Lok Sabha was thwarted and scuttled, and undermined. It was thanks to Pandit Nehru. He finally had to enter the parliament via Rajya Sabha. And Rajdeep, you know this as a seasoned journalist. Do we not remember India as one of the most decorated defense ministers? He was a very tall Dalit leader, Babu Jagjeevan Ram. How many people within Congress remember Babu Jagjeevan Ram, who was a noted Dalit, and his legacy has been completely obliterated? Okay, okay. you you made the point.